21 verse 14, a gift in secret pacifieth anger, and a reward in the bosom strong wrath. This is a really interesting proverb about what I'm calling the power of a gift, the power of reward. That word for reward, uh, commonly translated as a bribe. So you could you could read that and understand that as and a bribe, bride, bribe, not a bride. You're not getting married in this verse, but you're giving a gift to subvert justice in the bosom. Strong wrath that it pacifies strong wrath. We see the power of a gift now. In a proverb like this, we have to classify the proverb. And what I mean by that is, is this a proverb to warn us or to guide us? So remember that there's some proverbs that just sort of describe how people think. And my favorite one about that is bad, bad, says the buyer until he goes away and then he boasts. That's not telling us this is how you negotiate as a Christian but it is warning us that this is the way the world works. They're going to tell you how bad things are. And if you've ever tried to trade in a used car, you know exactly what that feels like. I traded in a used car once. They said, well, we're going to have to fix the power locks. I said, no, apparently you don't know how to use the power locks because they work just fine. I had to show them how. It, but, you know, every little thing. And yet, have you ever noticed their car is perfect no matter what age it is? It is, right? That, that's a proverb that is warning us about this is the way that the world is. This is the world in which we live. So this particular proverb, is it a proverb to warn or is it a proverb to guide? Well, my answer is yes. <laughs> that there are both elements present in this proverb. That it's, a, it's an application of soft words. Proverbs 15 verse 1 tells us that soft words turn away anger, but grievous words, literally harsh words, hard words, stir up wrath. In 1 Samuel chapter 25, you have the story where we meet for the first time Abigail, right? It's 1 Samuel 25. I didn't write it down. I'm trying to do it from memory, which we learned about the time of Jack's funeral. That's dangerous. But in that story... David asks Abigail's husband, Nabal, for some help because he was good to him and it was a time of celebration. And her husband, who was a fool, said, I have nothing to do with you. Word got back to David. David got very, very angry. And what was David going to do? He said, men, strap on your sword. We're going we're gonna to avenge ourselves. Do you remember what Abigail did in response? She hears what's happened. She recognizes the danger, and so she does two things. Number one, she's going to go speak with David and intercept David, but she doesn't go empty-handed. She prepares a gift. She prepares, uh, really meets the need of what, what David, David had a need of. And she goes and, and confronts him and lovingly, and it's a beautiful picture of uh, confronting someone because David was about to commit a sin and she kept him from that and she did it in love and she did it with a certain whimsy about it. And, and that's the idea certainly of the first half of Proverbs 21 verse 14. The other one that comes to mind is um, Jacob when he's coming back and he's going to meet his brother. get that introduction going now and again it, there was a sense there in which he had through you know making a really good soup and then the deception that his mother led him through really kind of taken what was Esau's in a sense and so now he's, he's sort of making amends for that but certainly can't restore the birthright and those things but he's, he's at least introducing uh, himself that way and in, in a kind way in a, in a loving way Chris Lynch, Pastor Chris Lynch when we were studying the law of God used to suggest, because the law of God addresses, you ever borrow something and forget that you borrowed it for a couple years and then you find it? The law of God addresses that. It says as you return the item, you're supposed to give a little gift. And 
Pastor Lynch, he loves food like I do, he said, bake him a plate of cookies too when you take that back as, as an apology. As I, I, you know, I should have returned this sooner, and, um, but, but here, I, I'm sorry, right? That's the idea, certainly, of the first half of the verse, and it's an application of a soft word of there. However, it is also a warning about the power of a gift. And, and certainly in the second half of the verse, that sort of gets uh, intensified that it, a reward in the bosom uh, can turn away strong wrath. And th- there's a certain power that is wielded, and it comes down to intention, doesn't it? Like so many things, it comes down to what are you trying to accomplish? Are you trying to get yourself uh, a favorable ruling from a judge? Or are, is it part of the act in, in the case of something you borrowed and forgot? Is it part of the act of, of repentance? Look, this was yours. You should have had it. So, so here, receive this from me. And there's, there's a fine line between that. There's a development in the proverb that the proverb intensifies as we go through it. In the first half of the proverb, the gift, it's a gift or a present. That's how the word is used. And it's, it can be used to describe a, a marriage gift, uh, giving a gift uh, in, in marriage, giving a gift even for uh, a daughter, you know, th- that type of arrangement and things, or giving a gift to the, the young couple as they get going. It's generally speaking used in most cases in that positive way as a gift. And you notice that, that this is given in secret, though. Now, the examples that I cited were all pretty public, like everybody saw Abigail coming, everybody saw saw the gift, but being done in secret isn't necessarily a bad thing, is it? Matthew 6, verse 3, Jesus says, uh, keep the secret from your left hand, at least that's how the way I read it, whatever your right hand's doing, don't let your left hand know, and uh, the, the idea being that when you give an alms, when you give a, a gift, when you're helping someone, you don't do it in secret. Now, Or excuse me, you do it in secret. You don't do it to be seen. Again, intention matters. Because he tells us to let our light so shine before men that they see our good works and glorify our Father in heaven. The goal is to glorify God. The problem with the Pharisees was everything they did was to glorify themselves. Look at at how devoted I am. Look at how wonderful I am. So there's, there's a very real sense here which... The gift is given. I've been given many gifts in secret that have been a very powerful testimony to even my mother when when Christians have helped and and supported and and loved uh, my family. They didn't do it on Facebook. didn't get announced. Twitterverse never found out. Uh, Parlor. Oh, wait, that never mind. We'll stop there. But um, uh, right. And and it's a testimony and it has a powerful, a powerful impact. In the second half of the verse, the word reward, it can be it can mean a present, but it is most commonly used as a bribe. A bribe that it, it's something that is given to change somebody's mind, to change a verdict, to as as we'll see later, subvert Justice. Actually, we probably won't get there later. But earlier in the book of Proverbs, in chapter 17, we were warned about um, we were warned about this. What was the reference, Abby? Do you remember? There it is. 17:23. A wicked man takes a gift out of the bosom. To pervert the ways of judgment. See, the the gift is given in the bosom, taken out of the bosom, to pervert the ways of judgment, to subvert justice. That in in that sense, this is a warning, because that is a sin. Uh, It it denotes, that phrase, it denotes uh, greater hiding. Is, is what's going on here. It's, it's, a, it's a bigger deal. It's a, it's a more secret deal. So the, the power of gifts, 
that we're, we're thinking about. In Proverbs 18, verse 16, it says, A man's gifts maketh room for him and bringeth him before great men. On first reading of that verse, I assume we're talking about somebody's talents. You know, a man, that's how we would use the term. If, if I said a man's gifts, we don't think about Christmas presents. We think about a, a man's singing ability, artistic ability, a building ability, uh, those, those type of things, right? But, but no, this is the word that means a present, giving a gift. So in that case, it's, it's a situation like Jacob, like Abigail, that it makes room for him. And then he can, can even state his cause, that it gets, gets an audience to be able to share. And in our verse tonight, strong wrath, um, it, it, it can be turned away. Even strong wrath can be turned away by the reward. Proverbs 18, verse 19 says, A brother offended is harder to be won than a strong city, and their contentions are like the bars of a castle. And again, there's this idea here. If you've ever been in an argument, a shouting match, that person shouts and you shout, at that point, what happens? It gets louder and louder. And And how much communication is happening? None. So how many problems are solved? Right? So a soft answer turns that away. And this is a, a different application of of that very thing, that uh, uh, the power of a gift to to turn away uh, to turn away wrath. One of the ways that we could apply this is to to understand that rewards are motivating. I love rewards. And it's the other side of punishments. Sometimes I think we think punishments are very scriptural, and they are. Spare the rod. What do you do to the child? Spoil the child. Right. Punishments are scriptural. However, rewards are also scriptural. And, and the idea of rewards, and we looked at that even Sunday morning when 1 Corinthians chapter 3, the idea of on the day of judgment, our deeds are going to be tested by fire. And those things that preserve the fire are a reward that the Lord is going to give to us. And, and even that principle uh, of, of rewarding uh, for, for faithful Obedience And one of the things that we're doing with the kids Sunday morning, uh, they, they can get a reward. They can earn a couple pieces of candy. They get to pick that candy out the night before, right? Is that what happens? Abby has a little list that they get. And if they're good in church, they, they get a reward. And if they're not, they don't. And, and there's a, a powerful motivating thing that is very biblical for us to, to consider. Uh, and... That's the first half of the verse. Now, the second half of the verse, just very quickly, is that when the gift is used to subvert justice, it is sin. And, and, and that, there's, there's a, a line there. Are we encouraging good behavior or are we trying to encourage bad behavior? Notice the very next verse in Proverbs. Speaking about this in verse 14, verse 15, it is joy to the just to do judgment, to do justice, to do what is right, but destruction shall be to the workers of iniquity. That justice is something that we should love and should never want to be subverted. So I've got two lessons. Number one, if it must be hidden, think again. The That intensifying of the verse. It was done in secret. Now it's in the bosom. And uh, the the fact that if I I don't, nobody else can find out about it. That's a red flag for me. That's a red flag. If you come up with a plan and say, I don't want to get any counsel. That's a plan you better get counsel about. And if you're going to do something and you say, well, I hope nobody finds out. That's probably not something you should be doing. So we need to, to consider it again. And then secondly, that we might embrace all forms of soft words. Talked about the divisive age, but I think we live in an angry age. And the angry rhetoric that often gets spewed. And, you know, the, everybody criticizes the other side, you know, in politics of, oh, well, he used fighting words. They all use fighting words. 
all of them. And I just don't like it. Now, I understand that we have to stand up and, and, and we have to uh, believe and be bold and, and take a stand. But I also think we can do it in love. And yes, there's hard truths that have to be said, but we can do so even in soft words. And that's not weak words. That's not compromising words, but those are loving words. Those are what we might call winsome words that we would call people to faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, that we'd stand clearly upon the word of God, that we would speak the truth in love. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the challenge that we see in it. And I pray, Father, and I ask that you might cause us to stand firmly and to stand for the truth of your word and that we would do so in love. Father, bless us this night, even as we go to our homes. May we uh, meditate upon the greatness of the gospel. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. If anybody wants to say goodbye to those on Zoom.